today is lesson 10 and it's basically all about order of operations what you did yesterday on 10 marks and what you're going to continue to do today on 10 marks order of operations and then comparing fractions when I say comparing fractions what do you think you're going to be doing to the fractions or the answers what do you think you're going to be doing when I say comparing what are you going to be doing? Okay, you can see if they're the same. Or what else could you look at? What do you think it means? When you compare two numbers. Okay, so you can see if they're equal. What else? Huh? Oh, okay, hold on to that for one minute. And then I'll come back. Okay. Perfect. So when you compare two answers, you're seeing if it's greater than, less than, or equal to. I'll do the work backwards thing later, but I want to do that before you guys go to the computer lab today. Okay, so let's look at, we're going to go ahead and just look at homework so I can give you guys some examples. I'll give you one example in each set, that way you know exactly what to do for the rest of the problem. So do you think it would be wise to write everything down as we're going along? Probably. Look at number one and two. Numbers one and two. I don't know if mine, does mine look like yours? Oh, I see, yeah, it does. Okay, write expressions to match the diagrams then. Evaluate. Well, think about what you did yesterday on 10 marks with order of operations. Do you think that you could possibly maybe use some parentheses around a couple of numbers? <coughs> possibly. And when we solve these problems, are we usually multiplying? With the tape diagrams, I want you to think about it a minute because I'm going to have you talk to your neighbor. And once I um, come around, I want to be able to see that you have discussed how to write an expression for number one, 17 plus 4, and then the second part, 4 sevenths plus 8 over 3. I want you to think about how we used parentheses yesterday when we solved the problem. Remember? How could you use parentheses maybe today while you're solving this? Talk to your neighbors. I'll just give you a few minutes and then we'll discuss it, okay? Okay, when you write an expression, you're writing something similar to what you see um, on number two. Those are expressions. So if I were to solve that first tape diagram, it says 17 plus 4. How would I begin to even maybe solve that? How would I begin to solve that problem? So, okay, so when I ask you to write an expression, what you're writing is the steps that you've pretty much taken to solve the problem. So the first thing we're going to do is add 17 plus 4. Then what do we do? Now what can we do? So you guys are writing this in your books. I'm giving you examples for your homework. Okay, I don't want to start solving it yet. I just want to set the whole problem up. Like I'm writing the whole thing out. Remember those e expressions that you saw yesterday, the equations that they had parentheses, 
So the power of two, and you did all these steps. They didn't say solve this first, solve this, right? They had it all written out. So how would I get that all written out and then start to solve? You're on the right track. So what would you do then? Forget the 21 part. Okay, 17 plus 4 divided by 4. Now, remember we say that fraction is also known as a what? What's a fraction also known as? Division problem. Division problem. So you could do it just like this. Or there's another way you could do it that we talked about yesterday in the computer lab. And what was that way? What, what else can we do to that problem? Okay, so what's a please represent? Uh, parentheses. parentheses. So let's say I do want to go ahead and do parentheses with this problem. <coughs> Where would my parentheses go? Your parentheses go up. Why would you put it around 17 plus 4? Why would you put your parentheses around that? Well, you're on the right track. When you look at that problem, what's the first thing you want to do in that problem? Add the two numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do an order of operations, what comes first? No. Parentheses. So anything in parentheses happens first. So you could do it the this way right here, or you could do it this way. 17 plus 4 divided by 4. So when we do order of operations, we start with the parentheses. What's 17 plus 4? We have 21, and you need to be writing it out just like this, 21, and what do we have left in the problem? Divide by 4. Divide by four. Now what do we do? Okay, make sure you're copying this onto your homework paper. This is one of your answers for homework tonight. So you said I take 21 divided by 4 and 21 goes in the box. Okay, so 21 divided by 4. How many times does 4 go into 21? Andy? Five times. Five times 4 is 20. So what do I do with my remainder? Do I need to put remainder? No, what do I do? Okay, five and one-fourth. That could also be a decimal, 5.25, but keep your answers as a fraction on these problems, okay? So that's what you should have written on the first under the first box or next to it, you should have all of these steps right here. The second one's going to be on your own. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want this lesson to be like, um, the four, the where the four comes from? Like, I know the second box has four boxes, has four like, spaces in it, but how do we know that there are four spaces in there? What do you mean? Yeah, what we did was we took the problem and broke it down and made it into an equation or an expression. Yeah, see? Yeah, see this? Right here. What's 17 plus 4? 21. So I could basically, if I were to look at this, say, okay. 
21. Now, does that look familiar to you? Do you get it now? Because now you have 21 over how many boxes? Four. Does that make sense? So one fourth of it would equal. Yes. Thank you for asking because you know some people wouldn't take the time to ask, and they'd be like counting butterflies in their head and have absolutely no clue. And so when you ask, hopefully those people who have the same question they paid attention. So the second one is going to be on your own. That second tape diagram, you will be using parentheses, and you're going to do it just like you did the other one. Might be a little more challenging, but I want to see if you can do it. And then number two, circle the expression that gives the same product as six times. No, six times three eighths. So scribble out that one in that problem. So the answer we're looking for is six times what would that equal? Six times three eighths. Go ahead. Do your little tape diagram right down there below and I want an answer here in about one minute and I'm going to draw some sticks. So it's six times three eighths. So with a tape diagram. Okay, we're going to split it into uh, six Parts. Right. What? Eight. Eight parts. Okay. Then it's six times three eighths. So I'll do three eighths in every single box. Okay, so three eighths in six of the boxes. So you have three eighths times six again. So we know each one of these is three eighths times six. So I added the threes together, so I did three times six and then put it over the 8. So I had this. Then if you need to make that a mixed number, it would be 2 and 2, 8, or 1, 4. Okay, so I, so what I did, I drew a line, I drew three times six and eight, so I did was six times three, which is eighteen, and then put the eight down there, and since it's improper, you have to make it a mixed fraction, so that's two, and two eighths, and then I simplified it to two and one four. Oh, okay. So I did a box and then so we have to do three times I mean six times three eighths and I thought the easiest way to do that would just be three times Six, so I'd be eighteen, and then we're gonna. Well, I put four boxes in instead of eight. And then 
And then nine over four would be two and one fourth. And all that together would equal nine. I did it the wrong way, I think. I think I did it the wrong way. Okay, so what I did is I do a tape diagram. And since it's six times three eighths, then I put a six up here. And then I'm going to divide the box into seven parts, or eight parts. Okay, then what I did is I took three, since we're timing it by three eighths, I always put three eighths to remind me. I see how many times go, eighths goes into six, which is zero. So then we just keep three eighths, and then all of them would equal, each one of them would equal three eighths. Then I took no. I messed up. It's not three eighths. Okay, there we go. I took six divided by eight to zero, with a zero down here, then six divided, minus zero is six, so six eighths. So each of them are six eighths. So then, I took six plus six plus six, which is 18, and that would equal 18 eighths, then took 18 divided by eight, and I know that eight times Two is sixteen, and that's the closest we can get. So then, eighteen minus sixteen is two, and then the remainder is two eighths. And then you can simplify that, which is two and one fourth. Okay. The reason I like hearing you guys speak about this every now and then, I have you get up and do this because. When I'm looking at the way you guys solve things, I'm thinking, where are they coming from? I don't get that. You know, sometimes you might think that when I'm teaching, because our brains don't think alike, do they? And that's one reason I like the Engage New York, is that they teach you a whole bunch of different ways to do it, and then your brain picks up which type or process that they think is easiest, right? Do you always have to solve it a specific way? No, you don't, because... I'm telling you right now, our brains are completely on a different plane. But I can tell you one thing. This is all new to me, too. So we're all learning it together, right? So we did all of that to find out that the answer was two and one-fourth. But could we also look at this and say, okay, six times three over eight. Just think about this. The first one says 8 divided by 3 times 6. And if we were to just even remotely start to think through this, you do parentheses first, right? Parentheses first? What would that give me? 18. And then you do division. 8 divided by 18, would that even give you the number 2, the whole number? No, it would give you a fraction, right? 8 divided by 18? 18 divided by 8 is what you're looking for, right? So if you actually just look at it, some of these you can just use process of elimination. 
3 divided by 8 times 6. What is a fraction always? What is it always? A fraction is always a, everybody? Division problem. What number goes inside the box? 18. Not 18, but... Three. Your top number goes in, right? Zero, bottom number goes on the outside. Someone read that to me. 8 divided by 3? No. Flip it. 3 divided by 8. Read your top number first. 3 divided by 8. On that, would I do 3 divided by 8 times 6? Would that be the same thing? 3 divided by 8 times 6. 6 times 3. 3 divided by 8 times 6. Would that be about the same thing? Yeah. Let's say you can't process it and you're trying and trying to figure it out. Do you need to just sit there and stare into space and try to figure it out, or could you solve each problem? You could solve each problem to see if it equals, what's the number we're trying to get to? Two and one-fourth. Me, personally, I'd probably have to go through and solve each one because I'm not very good at just eyeballing it. And that's what I think some of us were learning yesterday on that 10 mark, too, that that could really get confusing pretty quickly if you're trying to go through and you're kind of doing it in your head. Okay, so that is number two on your homework, which I would say is pretty easy. Number three is where we kind of start to get a little different here. Write expression to match, then evaluate. <coughs> on A, it says one-eighth the sum of 23 and 17. So what do you think? One-eighth the sum of 23 and 17. What do you think? I need an expression, though. You have to write an expression. Okay, when I say one eighth the sum. Plus one eight. Okay, any other ideas? I think what you do is you do, like you said, 23, 27, 30, plus you know, 30, mm -hmm. and then you do 40. <coughs> I think it's like, what's one eighth of 40? Because 8 goes in. So when you do one eighth of 40, what are you doing? What have we been doing with? One eighth, three eighths of ten. Three eighths. Yep. And in some some cases, you need to know this, people. This could mean to multiply. A dot. Um, like I showed you yesterday, the asterisk could mean to multiply, and sometimes they're going to just say this. If the number is directly next to the parentheses, that also means to multiply. Okay, if it's directly next to it. So your paper right now should look like this, because we're going to solve this problem so you have a guide tonight when you sit down to do your homework and you know what to do. What is the first step in the problem that we're going to do to solve it? Okay, so I'm going to have 40, and what happens to the rest of my equation now? My expression, yeah. It turns to 
Okay? Then what do I do? Okay. And the only reason we're not touching the division right now is because we'll have to start messing with reciprocals. So we're not going there yet. Okay, so 1 times 40 is over 8, which reduced would be 5. So your answer is 5. Make sure you circle it. I would say if you follow that first one that we did together, the rest are exactly the same. You won't have a problem. The only difference is that you'll have fractions in some of them. And fractions don't scare us anymore, do they? No. They don't. Uh, look at number four. Number four, you're just going to solve the problems. Start with your parentheses. Solve them, and then remember if it's the mouth is going to always eat the biggest number. I'm just going to assign 1 through 4 tonight, and then we'll do, well, I don't know. This looks kind of, this doesn't look bad either. Uh-huh. I hear the small, world's smallest violin playing right now. I just heard it looks terrible. It looks horrible. You're killing us here. Yes. Would you like? I think we have time to work through the first one real fast. Let's do the first one. Thank you for asking. Uh oh. Okay. Refocus. What do I do first? Morgan? You, um, you add 9 to 12, and that equals um, 40, wait, no, that equals 21. Okay. What well, happens to the rest of my number, the rest of my equation? Two or expression, as they're calling it. 2 over 3 times 21. And then what do I do? I'm going uphill. Then what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? How do I solve that? Okay, you can make a tape diagram. So I could do 21 divided into three parts, right? And then two parts of that. Or remember, I could do it this way. And just for time's sake, I'm going to do this. But, sweetheart, if tape diagram, you keep doing it, okay? If that's how you're being successful. 2 times 21 is? 32. Yes. Yeah, that's nice. That was nice of them. So you guys tell me then that you're okay with number five, too, then. Well, you tell me how, you tell me how easy this is. Uh, 42 divided by three. Who has it? <laughs> what? 14. And the second one would be, so this is the, uh, 
This side's 14. And then 15 times 2 thirds will be 15 times 2 divided by 3. 30 divided by 3. 10. So you're going to be drawing it that way. Make sure you show your work. Any questions about that before we move on to MPSS? So you're doing questions one through four on the homework. 